we should be live again. Are we back? Is everything good? Let me, uh, I had to play with my sources again, because we're, uh, let me fire up System Shock 2. I don't think I have it, uh, I don't have it as a, as a source yet, so I need to add it as a new game capture. this works. Well, <laughs> yeah, it just crashed because I alt-tabbed. Because of course it did. So hold on. Let me see if this even works. Looking Glass Studios, that makes me sad. But it is what it is. Oh, the scale's all fucked up. Alright, hold on. Yes, I'm gonna alt-tab again. Yes, it's gonna break it again. But we're gonna We're gonna scale that up, my dudes. Most definitely. There we go. All right. Now here comes the crash. Hey! No crash. Good. All right. So, let's chat. What do we want to do? Uh, well, first let me make sure the bindings aren't all fucked. Slide left, slide right. That all looks good. Lean left and right. I like Z, X, and C for those. Jump space. Toggle crouch is F on my planet. Come on. Hold crouch is control. There we go. Yeah, Alt S and Alt L, and if I remember right, you can't actually rebind those here, which is a giant pain in the ass. Alright. Let's fix our resolution, because, come on, boys. Uh-oh. Did I go too big? Did I break it? No, I didn't break it. This is nice. There we go. Oh, that's much better. How's it look in Streamland, though? That's the question. I probably scaled it too big. I probably had it configured to 800 by 600. Yeah, shoot, now it's not even letting me out. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Looks awesome. Well, yeah, but I think the, uh, the issue is that, uh, I made the mistake of, uh, I made the mistake of scaling it up when it was still in, uh, you know, oh jeez, come on. Oh, well, let's try, let's try something a little more tame. Is 
that going to crash it? Yep, yeah, that's going to crash it. That might that might actually crash everything. Jesus. Oh, come on, team. This isn't cool. <laughs> oh, we should have done this beforehand. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Phew. Didn't didn't crash the whole compute computer, but Oh, Alexander, thank you. Thank you so much for that. I need to edit the CFG. Yeah, okay, uh, what, do, what do I need to do, Jake? Do you know what change I need to make? I'm, I'm navigating to the CFG right now, but... You know, honestly, for today, I might just put it on a... Put it back on 800 by 600. <laughs> Leave it at that. But There should be two fields I need to change to 1920 and 1080. Is that a, would that be the extended config or the base config? I see display mode. Oh. Uh, you, well, okay, you know what, for this then, I'm just going to put it back on uh, 800 by 600. Because we had that working when it was blown up in OBS, so... <laughs> uh, shifting it seems to break it. Yeah, trying to change it breaks it, but... Old games do work so well on modern systems, don't they? I can't see anything. I can hear the sound, but... Let's open the task manager again. That seemed to move things along last time. There it goes. That's what we needed. Your video hardware is not supported. That's a lie, but that's okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, one more time. Failing that, we're just going to go play Mist. <laughs> mm. Hey, at least the stream's working. That's something, right? <laughs> All right, one more try. Play the game. Come on. Okay, hold on. The problem is, it's uh, like when I highlight it as a source, it's just not working anymore. Okay, let me reconfigure it. Let me just reconfigure it, and it ought to work. Except I can't, I can't actually see it in uh, in OBS. 
Okay. Go into cam.cfg. Okay. Change the screen size. Well, the real problem is I just can't, uh, that, oh, testicle, this is Shodan. <laughs> she's, uh, she's refusing to cooperate with OBS. All right, let me get the local files. Let me open up cam.cfg. General configs. Okay, game screen size is currently there, so let me just put it there. Close out. And see if we can fire it up again. I've See, now it's not going to let me switch anything back. Ah, there we go. Okay, how'd that work? Can you see it now? Yeah, okay, we can see it. Let's just blow it up. At this point, I am fine with playing at a lower resolution. Because I just want to play. Perfect. All right, let's jump back in now. Let's leave video alone. Left, right. That all looks good. And yeah, we'll talk about difficulty in a second. And, okay, let's talk about difficulty. Um, are you guys wanting this to be an Iron Man attempt? Because if so, we're not playing on Impossible. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, if it's not Iron Man and we're allowing save scumming, then I will put it on Impossible. I leave that decision to you, but tell me what you'd like to see. <laughs> ah. Iron Man, huh? All right. So when do, when do we allow saves? At the, at the beginning of a new deck? Can we make a hard save at the beginning of a new deck? Is that going to be our Iron Man rule? Alright, normal it is. Let's go. Look at you, hacker. A pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess, destined to inherit the Earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. God, I love this game. <laughs>
February 3rd is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems, nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNN Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. Well, I guess this incredible union of government and corporation is made possible finish. by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek. Fast. Revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. Here we go. Anyway, should we call this System Shock 3 hype? Since it's happening. Alright, I'm gonna make a save here at the very beginning. And what I was gonna say is, I guess, since we're on normal, and there are actually quantum reconstruction chambers in every level, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe we really don't need, need saves. We'll, say, we'll save at stream's end, at least, but... Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN Recruitment Facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The grav shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street-level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the grav shafts. Let's do that. Step into the grav shafts to proceed to the street-level recruitment. Let's get the basketball, because, duh... Eyeball some of the few normal humans we'll see in this game here at Happy Noodle. Before you choose your career, you'll want to learn some basic abilities. First, you should go into the basic training center. When you're done with basic training, Proceed to the advanced training area. Alright. Basic training it is. To pick up some basic skills you'll need to get by in the service, enter this Cyberlink booth. Inside, you'll learn the basic skills you'll need to get started. Alright. Welcome, trainee. While you're in our I'll virtual right training courses, we provide you with a simulated cyber interface. This training interface is identical to an actual military-grade cyber interface. Now, let's try it out. Move the mouse. See how it changes where you look? That means you're in shoot mode. Hit the tab key. This puts you in use mode, where you can use your mouse to interact with items in the world. Open your primary MFD, or multifunction display, by clicking on the MFD button near the bottom of the screen. This display shows your strengths in various areas. When you're ready to continue, press the tab key to go back to shoot mode. Try changing between modes until you get the hang of it. Follow the red path along the ground to the next training station. I've been through this enough times, I think I actually have memorized what he told us to do. But other than uh, other than telling us, you know, to to move the mouse in order to look around, tab puts us in use mode. Open your primary MFD. We got stats, tech, combat, and psi. We can look at all of our skills. Oh my goodness! Anyway, onward. 
Is that a framed image of the Dark Knight series? Yes, it is, actually. It's all three, uh, all three movie posters, and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but in the far back is the pass that we used to go to Trilogy Tuesday in Chicago when the third movie came out. To pick Watch. up items, center them on your screen and right-click. This will automatically place that item into your inventory. To view your inventory, press the Tab key. You can move items around your inventory by left-clicking and dragging them around. To drop an item, drag it from your inventory into the 3D view and release the mouse button. Just the complexity of this game was unreal, even in 1999. Uh, the bottom is slightly cut off. Oh, that's not picky at all. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Let's resize it. Just a touch. There we go. That should be good. And actually, we can expand it just a touch horizontally. There we go. That ought to do her. All right. Now the real question is whether it'll let us go back in after all tabbing. Yes! It did. Let's eat some chips. Drink some juice. Get a little health back. Wait, what? To use items like buttons in computers, center them in your view and click the right mouse button. All usable items will have brackets around them, Highlight the button on the pillar and right-click. This will activate the lift. Try it out. Ooh, boy. If All you right. can still see your inventory display, it means you're in use mode. Hit tab to return to shoot mode. <laughs> the object before you is a med hypo. Pick it up and then press tab to go into use mode. Right-clicking on the med hypo will use it and restore some needed hit points. Your hit points are displayed by a bar in the lower left corner of your screen. Many objects in your inventory can be used by right-clicking on them. Let's all get full health, even though it doesn't matter. See the crate in front of you? To search it, center it on your screen and right-click. If you are in use mode, simply move the pointer to the crate and right-click. To take an item from that container, simply left-click on it. This will automatically place that item in your inventory. To close the container window and return to shoot mode, Press the tab key. Fermium! Oh my goodness. One of the most important tools you have as a soldier is your PDA. This device stores audio logs, emails, and other useful information. Click on the disk icon near the bottom of your screen to bring up the PDA display. Currently, the contents of your PDA are empty. Now, pick up the audio log in front of you. Ooh, deck two is Medsai. Spoiler! This message is coming from the audio log you just picked up. You can use your PDA at any time to play any audio log or email you've received. In the field, the PDA is also used for keeping track of your current mission objectives and obtaining help information. Thanks, buddy. Now it's time to learn about jumping and mantling. To jump, simply press the space bar. Some surfaces can be mantled onto by holding down the space bar. Mantling lets you pull yourself up to ledges and other high places in front of you. Give it a try. One interesting thing to note about this game, obviously it uses the Dark Engine from Thief. And if you pay attention, it's basically the tile sound from the first two Thief games. But what's important to note about that is enemy detection still relies pretty heavily on the amount of sound you make. And, like, they never tell you that inside the game. It's just, I think, a holdover from the fact that they use the Dark Engine. But you can actually be pretty effectively stealthy in this game if you want to. I didn't do that on my original YouTube playthrough, but it might be something to consider for this one. To climb a ladder, simply walk into it and look upward. You'll automatically start climbing the ladder. Word. You've done well. Remember, if you're unclear on any aspect of what you've just learned, 
You can repeat the training as often as you wish. Does light affect you as well? No. They got rid of the, they got rid of the light gem. Although uh, Jake Jake seems to know it pretty well. There's I actually might be wrong about that, but I don't think so cuz there's no there's no real like way to gauge how shadowed you are. I think that they fully got rid of, but the sound is still... If you've completed basic training, you're ready for the advanced lessons provided here. Advanced training will familiarize you with the three key areas of military service. Weapons training, technical training, and psionics training. Approach the Cyberlink booth of your choice to train in that area. When you finish training in the three areas, proceed directly to the recruitment center to choose and start your military career. Alright, let's go left to right this time. Inside, you will learn how to reach out with your mind. Do not let fear block your path. We've provided you with a virtual interface and the temporary ability to project simulated psionic powers. Once you leave this area, these powers will be lost to you. Oh hell, let's, let's test it. We're on normal, it's not like it's going to be very hard to do. We'll test it when we get to the real game, see what happens. The red bar at the lower left of your screen tells you how many Psi points you have. Psi points symbolize the current ability to use your Psi powers. Psi hypos replenish your Psi points. Try using a Psi hypo and watch your Psi points increase. When you've reached your maximum in Psi points, move to the next station. This Psy amp amplifies your Psy powers and lets you project them into the real world. To equip it, pick it up, and then hit the tilde key. Firing the Psy amp activates your currently selected Psy discipline. You currently have access to two disciplines, cryokinesis and kinetic redirection. Go into use mode and click on the arrows on the bottom right of the screen. This will cycle through your available Psy disciplines. Later, clicking on the arrows above the number to the left will allow you to select side disciplines from higher tiers. Use cryokinesis to destroy the robot and kinetic redirection to pull that nanite container towards you. Be careful. Holding down the mouse button can augment the power, but holding it down for too long will cause burnout, which will damage you. If you run out of side points, use another Psy hypo. That's it for side training. Mastery of the mind is a slow but rewarding process. Return to this area if you need more guidance. Before you enlist in the OSA, it would be useful to experiment in the other training courses. <laughs> Respects for the robot. Oh, we're gonna slay so many enemies. I don't. I don't know how many of you watched the original uh, YouTube playthrough I did, but the respawn rate in this game is fucking insane. It's going to be a lot easier on normal. I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> Let's do technical. Inside, we'll teach you the basics of some technical skills you'll need in the Navy. Welcome. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, we'll provide you with a temporary cyber interface and the skills you need to accomplish the training tasks. But they'll only last so long as you're in the booth. The object in front of you is a container of nanites. Nanites are consumed whenever you perform technical tasks, such as hacking or repairing. When you pick up the container of nanites, they do not go in your general inventory, but are instead displayed in use mode on the bottom left of your screen. Walk over to the keypad by the door and try out hacking. Use the keypad by right-clicking on it. To the right of the number pad, you'll see an orange tab labeled Hack. Left-click on the tab. Text will appear indicating the difficulty of the hack and any bonuses that apply. Click on the start button to begin hacking. You'll see a grid of nodes. Clicking on a node will either turn it bright or dark. To successfully hack, you must connect three bright nodes in a straight line. Beware the ice nodes with the red outlines. If one of these turns dark, you fail the hack and you might break the item you're working on or worse. You can restart your hack attempt at any time by hitting the reset button though you'll have to pay the nanite cost again.
Uh, what's the build for this run? I haven't quite decided yet, but I um, I think I'm gonna go OSA, just because uh, on normal we're not gonna we'll actually like be able to use our side powers <laughs> because you know you can afford so many more upgrades and there are just so many more resources compared to impossible and uh, like if you're if you're actually able to like regularly use them without worrying about running out of resources like the psi builds are just so much more versatile than anything else so i'm thinking we're probably going to go osa you can use nanites to buy items from replicators to use a replicator right click on it then left click on the item you wish to purchase the item you purchased will drop into the slot below make sure you pick up your purchases before you leave Oh, Jake! Somebody you know actually, somebody you know actually knows the answer to that question. Well, okay. So sound is still active, but they nerfed everything else. Well, that makes sense. Hi there. Please make your selection. We can hack replicators. Don't forget. Hi there. Replicator Please make your database selection. reinitialized. Now that's a little bit of a continuity oversight. There's no reason we should be hearing from Xerxes when we aren't on the Von Braun yet, but that's okay. Fun fact, Xerxes is voiced by Steven Russell, the same guy who did the voice of Garrett in the first three Thief games. Steven Russell also does one of the sort of cacophony of voices that is the many when they talk to you. You learn the basics of the technical skills. There are several other technical skills you'll learn throughout the course of your career, such as repairing items and modifying weapons. The cyber interfaces for these tasks are similar to the hacking interface. Before you enlist in the Navy, try out the other training courses. They'll be useful. Alright, we gotta do weapons training, but before that, it's time for another brew. I'm still killing off all the leftover light beer from my party, so I'm basically drinking water. But, it is what it is. Somebody's gotta do it, because I'm not gonna throw away anything that has even that much alcohol in it. Uh, I don't know if he was a lot of voices in Skyrim DBZ. I know he did do Mercer Frey, and, you know, Mercer Frey basically sounds exactly like Garrett, and that's why it's the same guy. He does a boatload of voices for Fallout. I know that. Alright, here we go. Alright, wannabe. If you want to learn the weapon skills it takes to even think about joining the Marines, come on in. We're looking for a few good men. Good to have you on board. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, the UNN has kindly provided you with a virtual cyber interface and all the simulated skill levels you'll need for the training tasks. But don't get too cocky. They'll disappear once you leave the booth. Now we'll teach you how to handle a firearm. Pick up the pistol and the clip from the table. You can equip the weapon in one of two ways. Bring up your inventory and drag the pistol to your weapons equip slot near the right hand side of your inventory. If that's too slow for you, you can use the hotkeys on the keyboard. Press 2. If the pistol was in your inventory, it will equip for you automatically. To lock and load the ammo clip, hit the R key or hit the reload button on the lower right corner of your screen. Once you've loaded the firearm, take a shot at the dummy robot by pressing your left mouse button when in shooting. Notice how its health bar gets shorter as you chip away at it. That's right, yeah, he did the voice of Viarmo. Some items need to be charged with energy before they can be used. Pick up the laser pistol. Now use the recharging station nearby. The recharge station will juice up all of your energy-based items. Weapons, batteries, you name it. <laughs> Nyren, if you're gonna pay respects to every enemy I kill, you're gonna be pressing F a lot, my friend. <laughs> This is a fun fact. 
the one thing that Ken Levine admits he got wrong in System Shock 2 is weapon degradation. He admitted in subsequent interviews that they fucked it up and made it happen way too fast, and it was ridiculous. Weapons are not fine wines. They do not get better with age. The colored dot on the lower right corner of the screen tells you what kind of shape your firearm is in. Green is good, red is bad. To fight the effects of wear and tear, a soldier with maintenance skill can use a maintenance tool to improve the condition of his weapon. Just pick up the tool, open your inventory, and drag the tool onto your pistol. Remember that maintenance tools are only good for a single use. Good work. Now you're ready for the Marines. Take a look at the other training areas first before you enlist. They might just come in handy. All right, let's go OSA. Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. A shuttle will take you to a UNN orbital space station where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. OSA, baby. Cause you know, do you know the main reason I like OSA? I guess we were just talking about it. It's cause if you use psionics, you don't have to deal with weapon degradation. It's just your psyamp. FF key. <laughs> Oh, it auto-saved! How about that? What's up, normal human? Year one! The OSA welcomes you to Orbital Station Chun-Lo. Ready yourself to feel the limitations of your mind slipping away. We will guide your path over the next four years. The shuttle base at the center of the station will ferry you to your next stage of growth. When you've chosen, head into the appropriate shuttle bay. Get ready to learn things you've never imagined. Cool. OSA is just statistically better even if you decide not to use Psy at all. That I didn't know, Jake, but it makes sense to me. All right, I'll let, I'll let her tell me about all these. We've got TOS Shaoling Sensory Deprivation Tank. The Sensory Deprivation Tanks aboard the TOS Shaoling await you. There you will spend a solitary year focused in a meditation on motion and sound and how they may serve your will. Cryokinesis, Psychogenic Cyber Affinity, and Tier 2 Psy Disciplines. That's the one we're doing, so I'll do it last. Chulun Sensory Deprivation Tank. The Sensory Deprivation Tanks aboard the TOS Chulun are modulated for your training. You shall spend a year in contemplation of mass, both yours and that of objects, until you can bend them to your intentions. So no matter what, we get Tier 2 Psy and Cryokinesis. The choice is between Psychogenic Cyber Affinity, um, Psychogenic... Or the sensory deprivation screen. tanks aboard the TOS Chulun are modulated for your training. You shall spend a year in contemplation of mass, both yours and that of objects, until you can bend them to your intentions. This one that we're doing gets us Tier 2 Psy, Cryokinesis, and Kinetic Redirection, or Psy Pull, which is what I want, so... The sensory deprivation tanks aboard the TOS Runang await you. A year in meditation on the nature of matter will grant you power over it. So here we go. Alright, we got our Tier 2 side Disciplines, Cryokinesis, and Kinetic Redirection. February 15, 2112. Your year in the tanks of the Runang is finished. Your will has grown. Your mind can freeze your foes in their tracks and pull distant objects to you. These talents will serve you well. Second tier disciplines are now within your grasp. You may now take your skills into the field to pit them against our enemies. You've mastered tier two Psy disciplines, cryokinesis, and kinetic redirection. Here's year two. 
options. Tactical psionic training. Your body has been neglected in your training of your mind. On IO, you will find soldiers who wish to test their endurance. You will surpass their physical prowess without compromising your mental discipline. Plus two endurance. What would be interesting is a sci-fi-ish thief game. <laughs> but you wouldn't trust many devs to do it right. It would be interesting, and... I mean... I... I... I don't... I, I'm not as despondent about modern gaming as a lot of people are. There are good devs out there. You just have to get through the EAs of the world by not buying their games. The Kiluan Research Lab. Dr. Chandris Valan's research labs have produced many of this decade's advances in psionic technique. You shall spend a year serving his genius, learning to understand his insights and whims. Plus one research, or what we're going with, telepathic interrogation. Sifting the thoughts of treachery and disloyalty from the morass of emotion and internal conflict that fill most mundanes can be disquieting. You shall spend a year building the general strength of your mind, while learning how to probe the thoughts of the less capable without losing yourself. Plus two psionic ability. And the reason I want this is because for a very long time, cryokinesis is going to be our main weapon, and boosting our size stat gives it more damage. Twenty-three February, twenty-one thirteen. Your time of service at the OSA Central Core has reached its end. Your year was mostly peaceful, with one major exception. The hired assassin tried to disguise her intentions under a layer of quite explicit daydreams, but you were not deceived. Near the end, you felt the presence of her fading thoughts enter your own mind, and then vanish like clearing mist. You've gained plus two psionic ability. Here's the Macarena bot. Always gotta watch him Macarena when you play this game. It was 1999 after all. Good bot. Alright, and for our third year... Acts of political terrorism and corporate coercion disturb corporate and political stability. You shall spend a year battling these chaotic elements, both psionically and by physical force. So that was, what was, anti-terrorism field operations gave us strength, agility, cyber Acts affinity, and psychogenic and corporate agility. Coercion disturb corporate and political stability. You shall spend a year battling these chaotic elements, both psionically and by physical force. Selections group field operations gives us... In the grand scheme, individuals are no more important than pieces on a game board. Occasionally, it becomes necessary to remove a piece without disturbing the flow of the game. These removals will be done in silence and with complete secrecy. You shall spend a year learning these skills. I, I, I think these three are the same except for the power. So that was psychogenic agility. This one was... I forgot already, shit. In the grand reflex scheme, dampening. individuals are no more important than pieces on a game board. Occasionally, it becomes necessary to remove a piece without disturbing the flow of the game. These removals will be done in silence and with complete secrecy. You shall spend a year learning these skills. And physical field operations gives us remote electron tampering, which is the one I'm going to take. Many yep. threats to security can only be defeated from inside. Your mind shall be carefully blanked and conditioned with the nature and past of a criminal. Join with the criminal and rebellious. Endure their squalor and chaos. And then, when it is time, liquidate them from within. All right, here we go. Because, um, since we're playing Iron Man, and I can't just save scum... <laughs> If I trip an alarm, remote electron tampering is going to be very useful. <laughs> 
9 February 2114. Your time of service at the OSA field base has reached its end. Even now your mind is somewhat clouded and you do not recall all the details. You played your part well for most of a year, and your enemies called you friend until you fell upon them with all your talents. You've gained plus one strength, plus one agility, and plus one cybernetic affinity, and mastered remote electron tampering. Here we go. Read this yourselves, I don't want to talk over the sound. An error in memory restoration. How convenient. Steady yourself, soldier. This is Dr. Janice Polito of the computer ops staff of the Von Braun. You're safe for the time being. You're recovering from the effects of surgery and will be unable to remember any of the events of the last few weeks. You're on board the starship Von Braun and something's gone very, very wrong. Some kind of force has hijacked this ship. That's why you volunteered to be implanted with some experimental cybernetic implants. Rely on your cyber interface. It just might save your life. You must find an elevator and come up to Deck 4 to meet me. Deck 4. Can you remember that? But keep your eyes open. They're after us both now. This guy, this protagonist is colloquially called Goggles. Just because of the goggles he wears. Watch out. I'm getting strange readings from that radar dish outside the window. It's become unstable due to- MOVE! Take cover! Critical decompression hazard in the cryo-recovery suite. Evacuate immediately. Alright. So come in here and get a wrench off the body. You'll notice we start with the wrench and the cyan, and I am going to make another hard save here at the beginning of the real game. So sorry. But I'm going to. Let's wrench it up, boys! Smash the vent, and climb the ladder. And you'll notice we, we do still have our basketball. That's important. is depressurizing and the blue vacuum shield won't last long. Get through a secure airlock before you're sucked into space. Move it! Despite her panicky voice, there's not actually a time limit on any of this. So we hit this switch to open this door. Information. The cyber interface. Many of your actions are now cyber enhanced. Your cyber interface supports two modes. Shoot, a minimal mode, and use, a more complex mode. Shoot mode provides crosshairs in the center of the screen. Fire your current weapon at the crosshairs by left-clicking. Right-clicking a nearby object under your cursor will interact with that object. If it is a button or a machine, you will use it. If it is something that you can pick up, it will go into your inventory. You may enter use mode by hitting the tab key. When you're in use mode, you will see an arrow cursor, which you may move about. You can move objects around in your inventory by left-click and dragging them. 
You can use most objects in your inventory by moving the cursor over them and right clicking. To get back into shoot mode, simply hit the tab key again or left click in the main world view. Key card, cryogenic sector access card. The PDA. Your PDA contains every email, log, and info kiosk note you find on board. It also contains an automatic note-taking utility, which keeps you informed of pressing tasks while on board. You can access the PDA by left-clicking on the log icon on the right info bar. Audio log, Amanpour, July 7th, 2114. Great. I've got to change the access codes out of CryoA again. Like I've got nothing better to do. I think Rassy just likes to make work for me. I'll set the new code to 45100. That should be easy enough to remember. Wrench is legit. Get those strength boosters. Oh yeah, man. That and uh, adrenaline overproduction will be set. Just like a little aside, this is one of the first games I ever played where I could actually type out codes on my number pad and it worked. Immersive as fuck, as they say. Warning. Decompression event imminent. Please move immediately to cryo recovery B. Decompression event imminent. Inoperative. Auxiliary power override failure. Please replace power cell. There's an extra wrench over there in case you somehow missed it. This power cell is dead. There should be a recharger nearby. Just use it and it will recharge all the power-driven devices in your possession. After you've recharged the cell, plug it into the auxiliary power unit. That should open the airlock door. Be quick about it. The vacuum seals won't hold up much longer. Recharge. Place. Stream just stuttered. Is it okay, though? Like, did, did it recover, or is it offline? Good. You've managed to get out before the whole area depressurized. I've just uploaded you some cybernetic modules. You can use them to upgrade your cybernetic rig at the upgrade units in this area. There are four types of units in the next room. One for each subsystem of your cybernetic gear. Stats, psi, weapons, and tech. But use the modules carefully. They're hard to come by. Alright, I am saving because I am going to Alt-Tab. And check on stream health. Well, it looks fine to me. Okay, it, it it's okay. Okay, good. Turn on the lights! Crate it up! And we got more info kiosks. Hooray! Maps. To access maps for a section of a level, enter use mode and click on the map button. Oh, like so. The map will display rooms that you've already been to and will highlight the room that you are in. If you have the spatially aware OS upgrade, the map will also display the areas you have not yet been to. Your position on the map is indicated by a red pointer. Many useful common items, such as replicators and upgrade units, are marked on the map with a key to the icons on the lower left. You can place navigation markers on the map by hitting the N key. This will mark your current position with a small triangle. This marker, or any other, may be selected when you have the full map displayed. While selected, any text you type will get annotated to that marker. If you click the mini-map button on the main map display, a small portion of the map will be displayed in the upper right-hand corner of your screen while you're in move, move mode. Let's turn on the mini-map. So that's useful. Another info kiosk. Yay! The MFD. The MFD button on your lower right display contains information about your character. It has four major areas, one for each of the categories of character growth. Stats, tech, combat, and psi. 
With the exception of the sky screen, these, in, these screens are informational only and let you know your current skills and abilities. The stat screen also shows your current OS upgrades and the tech screen displays your installed software. The Psy area is a bit more complicated. It has five tabs, each representing a different tier of Psy disciplines. You may click on any Psy discipline that you currently know in order to select that discipline. The next time you use the Psy amp, that discipline will activate. Alright, well, let's get a... Uh, Let's default to cryokinesis. And let's roll on through. Here's a corpse with 10 nanites. And yet another kiosk. Left info tab. The lower left info tab includes a count of how many cybernetic modules and nanites you have, a button to call up your maps, map, a button to call up reports on anything you've researched, a test tube icon, and a query button, question mark, which will give you an expanded help text on items in your inventory. Let's click on any of these buttons to access the function. So we, we have no research. A basketball! Developed by Esper Industries, a critical branch of Triops Military R&D Division, this controversial device allows psionically able individuals to amplify and project their powers into the world. Before the development of the Psy Amp, Psy powers were mostly only detectable in a lab environment. The Amp contains and inhibits the normal diffusion problems inherent in Psy phenomena. The Amp also allows the user to effectively channel their innate Psy powers to a number of prescribed effects. This device caused a furor in the Psy community, primarily because of its obvious military applications, but also because of the Amp's tendency to define psionic disciplines along a few specific and generally, generally utilitarian axes. Wrench! A multi-purpose tool generally used for engineering purposes. However, it makes an effective makeshift weapon. When you hit someone over the head with 22 pounds of steel, they tend not to appreciate it. Tazamanpour, VB Maintenance Crew. The wrench does not require any weapon skill to use. Alright, let's wrench it up, baby. Stream's dead? What? No, it's not. Oh, F dead guy. Okay, okay. Motherfucking display. Massive fucking display. This is, stream's not dead. Looks fine. God, we got shit breaking all over the place. This guy's got four new modules. So the first upgrade we really need to get is level 1 hack, which is going to cost 10. We've got 8 right now, so let's just keep saving for the moment. Another info kiosk. What could this one be? Software. Software helps you perform the to perform the various technical tasks, such as hacking, repairing, and modifying. Higher levels of software provide greater bonuses to these operations, both increasing your chance of success on any given node and decreasing the number of dangerous nodes. The exact details on any given task will be indicated in the MFD when you attempt to perform it. In the crate, we got Mo Nanites. And here's an audio log. Grassi, July 7th, 2114. Hey Doc, a security bot showed up with orders for me to place this grunt into the recovery freezer. I'm no cyber doc, but I know a plant job when I see one. I suppose you know they outlawed our grade cyber goodies after that fiasco back on Citadel Station. But hey, I just work here, right? Dead body with a med hypo! Designed as a quick fix for minor injuries, the ChemCal Medical Hypo injects a healing enzyme which can make a crude assessment of the patient's condition and somewhat alter the chemical makeup of the hypo to fit the case. In addition, the hypo contains a mixture of standard painkillers and anticoagulants. Not meant as a treatment for serious injury, the med hypo will do in a pinch. The only downside is the rather sharp stick of the over-engineered vac needle, which was nearly recalled 12 years ago on its introduction. Strong litigation by Triops legal department eliminated that potentially costly eventuality. Here's another info kiosk. Computer hacking. 
There are numerous devices to hack on board, security systems, replicators, keypads, and more. Each hack attempt costs a specified number of nanites. To try to override one of these systems, simply click on the hack button in the item's MFD. This will bring up a hacking screen, which will detail information about your chances and allow you an opportunity to back out before spending the nanites and attempting to break through the system's security. Your chance for failing to modify any given square cannot be lowered below 15%. The hacking interface itself will display a grid of squares and require you to light up three squares in a row. Red squares have dangerous ice on them, while cyan squares are safe to hack. If you are unsuccessful at modifying a cyan square, it is darkened. If you are unsuccessful at modifying a red square, you have critically failed the attempt. Critical failure can cause a wide range of bad effects, from breakage to activation of security alerts. Oh man, Iron Man is going to be rough with hacking security crates and whatnot. So for this door, we don't know the code. And we don't have the requisite hack skills, so... Out we go. Up the lift, up the lift. I'm gonna go right first, just cause. Time for some side pull, bitches. We got... Ammunition. Oh, come on now. What the hell was that? And a speed booster. Six standard bullets. This 45 standard round is encased in a solid steel jacket. These rounds provide general purpose stopping power. Their main advantage of this ordinance is that it's extremely cheap to produce and therefore readily available. No target type is either particularly vulnerable nor resistant to these rounds. And a speed booster. The Vita Hybe speed boost typo confers 20 seconds of double speed. Popular among high school students for a dangerous speed sport of street sport of crash careening, the speed boost typo can also be invaluable in emergencies. Homeboy's got a Psyamp. We don't need that. We already have one. Yep. Psy Disciplines! There are five tiers of Psy Disciplines. You can learn more Psionic Disciplines by enhancing your Psy skills at an upgrade unit. To use a Psy Discipline, equip your Psyamp, tilde key, then select a Discipline in the Psy MFD or in the ammo window on the bottom right of the screen. Press the left mouse button to fire the selected Psy Discipline. What's up, bruh? Can somebody let me out? I can't find my car. Please, let me out of here. I want to have cryokinesis. I want to have cryokinesis by default. Access needed. Science sector access required. 20 nanites. Inventory. To see your inventory, hit the tab key. You may only carry a limited number of items as visually indicated by the number of squares in your inventory. The stronger you are, the more inventory you may carry. You may move items around freely in your inventory and may equip them by dragging them to the weapon armor implant section on the right, and you may drop them by dragging them into the 3D view. To drag an item, click and hold with the left mouse button. And I think this one's just a light switch. More info! Equipping weapons. You may equip weapons in one of two ways. First, you may drag a weapon to your weapon equip slot near the upper right part of your inventory, where the arm looking thing is. Second, you may use the top row of number keys on your keyboard. Each weapon type is mapped to a specific key from tilde to equals and including the slash key, regardless of whether it's on the top row or not. Repeated presses of a number key cycle through numerous copies of a single weapon type. Armor and implants may only be equipped by dragging the item into the appropriate slot on the upper right of the inventory. F-Ghost, he never got out despite being a ghost. Well, I think, uh, I, th I, I, I think that was before he was actually a ghost. Alright. Up here. Science Sector Access Card. 20 nanites. Psy Hypo and six rifled slugs. 
The Psy Booster Hypo contains a potent cocktail of tension relievers, dopamine inhibitors, and circulatory stimulators. A dose will increase your Psy points by 30 up to your maximum. The Surgeon General has warned that Psy Booster Hypos can be habit-forming and dangerous to your health. Note also that the manufacturer has used a special patented process to make these items unable to be duplicated by those who know the molecular duplication Psy discipline in order to protect their monopoly. Rifled Slugs the design of the basic shotgun slug hasn't changed much in the past century. A small, heavy piece of metal delivered with a high kinetic energy is a short, simple recipe for damage. Alright, we're just about done in this intro section. Don't miss that second med hypo. Now that we have the access card, we can get through here. And... We're gonna start having to deal with enemies. Here we go. Well done. I'm uploading some more modules. <laughs> Hybrids. With cans of cola. I'm gonna retreat back here because the respawn rate's insane. And I know this area is safe. So for the c can of cola, invented in the early part of the 20th century, soda was created as a refreshing beverage, a mixture of carbonated water and corn syrup. For such a trivial seeming product, soda and similar beverages fueled the rise of the first two mega corporations, the names of which are illegal to publish by UNN Information Ordinance Number 234-FD34. Net rumors suggest that these two corporations' marketing skirmishes turned into physical ones, promulgated by the destruction of offshore bottling plants by hired mercenary squads in 2023. F Pipe Dude 1 and 2. <laughs> and uh, unresearched object. This item is not yet researched, and that's all we'll say to us. I'm going to hold on to the cola cans for now while I have the space, because they each, uh, they'll each restore one HP in the event we take damage. So, since we're here and we've now got the modules, let's go ahead and get hacked to one. While we're at it, let's go ahead and hack this keypad. Now this is going to be interesting. Security access compromised. Security access compromised. Alright, so we got two new speed boosters and a brawn boost implant. Trigon Manufactory's Brawn Boost trademark implant increases the user's strength by one, burning up 1% of its charge every 10 seconds. The implant acts to circumvent many of the legal restrictions on athletic pharmaceuticals by avoiding any actual drugs and simply stimulating the musculature with electric and magnetic impulses. I'm not going to equip it yet because I want to keep the charge going. Well, no. that's silly. I'm going to go ahead and equip it. And notice that we open up three inventory slots while it's equipped. Because we raise our strength by one. Man, Coca-Cola and Pepsi better start hiring mercs soon. Yeah, right? Alright. Polito wanted us to go to deck four and meter, so let's go to the elevator. Access to decks one through five. That insipid computer Xerxes has shut down the elevator as well. You can transfer power at the engine core on deck one, which will get the elevator up and running again. But you can't use the elevator to get down there. Wait. There's some kind of maintenance access right on this hallway. You can use it to reach deck one. However, it's locked, and Xerxes is hiding the passcode from me. Dr. Watts should have the code. He's probably in the crew subsection. Grassi has the key to get in there, but he's in the medical subsection, probably near the biopsy lab. Now get to the medical subsection and find Grassi. It's 2018, they have five years for this to happen. Alright, so here's the security control station. We can disable security with these if we're able to hack them. There's no reason to mess with it now, though. 
restricted area, no admittance. Here's a security crate. These require hack skill 2 to hack. So we can temporarily disable security. I see no need to do that right now. In here, we got a bag of chips. Krakos potato chips, voted the UNN's national food product of the early 21st century, are made from slices of common potatoes deep fried in hydrogenated oils. This treat is often supplemented with vitamins to boost its questionable nutritional value. When you need a tasty treat, Krakos are the chips to eat. Eat them by the bunch or by pound. New improved Krakos won't let you down. Krakos Neuronet Promotion 2111. A bottle of liquor. Now we're talking. With advances in pharmaceuticals that mimic the effects of alcohol, liquor has begun to be rated in both true proof and factor proof, with the strongest drinks being close to 330 factor proof. This rot gut gets you drunk the old fashioned way with no added factor proof. And in the desk, an audio log, Delacroix, April 4th, 2114. Why is it that no one listens to me? The security protocols on the Xerxes system are clearly immature. Some idiot hacked into the primary data loop last night and made Xerxes sing Elvis Presley songs for three hours. I finally had to pull the voice subsystem offline. What would happen if someone with a real agenda got into him? This, probably. Hey, get cryokinesis ready. We're about to have to deal with the camera. Damn. The power outage has also taken out access to this bulkhead. It's the only way to get to the medical subsection. Pick up the battery from the floor and find a recharger. The one you used before is in hard vacuum now, I'm afraid. But there should be another one on this deck. Once you get the battery recharged, place it in the auxiliary override. A corpse! A game cartridge, swine keeper, an MFD game player, and a dead power cell. Alright, let's look through these. Swine keeper! This memory module complains a, contains a complete working game for use with your VMU game pig, TM. Oink. Okay. A shiny new Game Pig trademark entertainment device from Vortex Mechanics Unlimited. Able to play dozens of different games simply by inserting new memory cartridges. Most games star Grunty the Gaming Pig, who first rose to fame in the 2005 interactive entertainment Corporate Swine. Disclaimer, VMU is not liable for any accidents which may occur due to distraction from playing Game Pig TM games in a heads-up display. Oink. And a dead power cell. The Electrosim Type 5 power cell is a new model designed to deliver a lot of power over a small period of time. These are typically used to provide emergency backup power for ship critical systems. Unfortunately, they have a tendency to lose their charge if stored for more than a few weeks, so they must be frequently recharged at energy recharging stations. Electrosim has replaced this unit with the more stable 5A, but the upgrade was not available before the Von Braun left Earth. So we can put the game cartridge into the game player. I thought, oh, we do that just by right clicking, excuse me. And now we can play Swine Keeper! Corn attracts swine, don't step on corn, flag the corn. So this is basically just, you stepped on the corn, game over. This is basically just a poor man's minesweeper. Might as well finish it once. found all the corn, you win. Hooray. 
Now what's this info kiosk? Energy rechargers. Alright, see that guy's messed up face. Using a recharger provides complete replenishment to all your power-driven devices, including implants, energy weapons, and other items you might find in the world, such as auxiliary power units. The maintenance skill allows you to recharge items beyond their normal capacity. Interesting. Alright. Let's look back here before we leave. A potted plant. We're gonna drop that, but... This hardy specimen has been genetically tailored to require minimal water, even less light, and almost no minerals or fertilizer. It bears a striking resemblance in both color and lifelessness to the plastic plants of several decades past. Audio log, Curtis, July 6th, 2114. Marie, I've got to restrict access to engineering until we can figure out what to do down there. It's just too hot. I don't know where all the hazard suits went, so I'm reduced to bringing down an armful of rad hypos. Those damn things always give me a headache. And sure enough, here's an anti-radiation hypo. This agent radically accelerates the half-life breakdown of many potentially hazardous compounds. Dr. Marie Delacroix, the chief engineer of aboard the Von Braun, was well aware of the imperfections inherent in the rush to development of the ship. Notably, the coolant system of the ship had a chronic cracking problem, leading to the widespread leakage of hazardous materials. While these leaks are easily detected and usually quickly fixed, she demanded that an excess supply of ChemCal rad hypos be distributed throughout the ship. Unlike most of her cautions regarding conditions on the Von Braun, this one was actually heated. Most effective if used shortly after the hazardous event, anti-radiation hypos inject small amounts of an agent commercially, commercially known as Neutralizer. So uh, there's actually no reason to carry the bottle of liquor, so I'm going to drop that. And um, we've got some backtracking to do, but I need to hit the restroom, so give me a moment and I will be right back. Looks like Hank at least raised his head for y'all while I was gone. Are there soda vending machines in this game? I think, uh, I mean, technically, I think you can certainly buy, uh, cola cans from some of the replicators. Another kiosk. Xerxes and security. The onboard security system is controlled by Xerxes, the ship's computer. If a security camera spots you, it will sound the alarm and security forces will rush to find you. A camera that has not yet spotted you will display a green light. As it becomes alert to your presence, the light will change from green to yellow and then to red. You should make sure to either destroy security cameras before they turn red, or hack into security computers to temporarily disable them. If the alarm does go off, you can terminate it by using a security computer. What's up, bro? A corpse. He's got nothing. On most decks, you'll find a quantum bio-reconstruction device. Xerxes shut them all down, but I've discreetly put them back online. You'll need to interface with each machine locally to provide a quantum entanglement sample. Once you do that, the device will be able to rebuild your body essentially from scratch. It's not pleasant.
pleasant, but it's preferable to slow decomposition. Sample acquired. Quantum bioreconstruction machine now active. Excellent. Audio log, Grassi, June 20th, 2114. I got called up around 0430 to help unload the shuttle coming back from Tau City. Kerenskin was there alone. Jesus, what the hell happened to him? He lost most of his hair, and you could see these lumps on the side of his neck. And that smell. I told him he should go see Dr. Watts, but he told me to mind my own business. Well, la -dee da Let's search the body bags. We got a Psy Hypo. And a med hypo. Not bad. It's Xerxes. This is Xerxes. Please report any unauthorized database interactions to your direct superior. Remember, a smooth operation is everybody's responsibility. There's 20 nanites. God damn. Somebody's hacked into this thing again. I'm gonna tell Delacroix. No reason to get all choked up, hanging out, hey swinging by. Please make your selection. You guys are like spoiler trolls watching somebody play Act 1 of Doki Doki. With all the hanging jokes. Bag of chips, bullets, med hypo. No need to spend any nanites here. He's got a pistol in very good condition. I'm just gonna unload it. I don't actually care to carry the pistol itself. All this ammo is great for recycling though. Pistol. The pistol requires a standard weapon skill of one in order to use. Both modifications to the pistol increase damage. The first also increases the clip size, while the second decreases the reload time. Developed by Trioptimum's military division, the Talon M2A3 45 caliber pistol is, pistol is a standard issue sidearm provided to all UNN military personnel. After 23 years in service, the weapon has been designed to accept a number of kinds of ammunition, including the standard steel jacketed rounds, uranium tipped armor piercing rounds, and even nanite based anti personnel rounds. But you'll see, we don't even have the standard weapon skill of one, so we can't use the pistol. Info terminal. Basic ammo use. When you have a weapon equipped, you will see the weapon itself held in front of you, and if the weapon uses ammunition, the type of ammunition, the setting, and the condition of the weapon will be shown in the lower right small window. A good conditioned weapon will have a green dot. After the weapon condition degrades, the dot will turn yellow and then red. To attack with the weapon, left click, using the crosshair to aim. Most ammunition comes in clips containing multiple bullets. To reload with the same ammo, hit R and hit B in order to switch ammo. If you are in use mode, the ammo window will be expanded and there will be buttons to toggle the weapon setting to reload the weapon with the same ammo and a green arrow to reload with a different type of ammunition. We can actually uh, click on some of this stuff too, I just realized. Efficient nanite based technology was introduced after a series of radical experiments at the University of Masala in 2078. Nanites are subatomic machines that are capable of being programmed to perform a nearly infinite variety of tasks from forming themselves in a replication grid to form into arbitrary objects to fighting bacteria and viruses in the human bloodstream. In other words, nanites, combined with replication tech, created the every material. The UNN Currency Redefinition Act of 2082 opened up the door for moving financial transactions to a strict nanite basis. Cyber modules? Cybernetic modules contain a mix of reprogrammable RNA databases and Brainwave EM, which can be used to augment a cyber rig at any upgrade unit, a proprietary trioptimum training device. Skills acquired via upgrade units are not guaranteed to last more than a few weeks. Those skills acquired in this fashion and then used consistently, and especially under stressful conditions, are frequently found to be permanent. God was he jacked. I had never seen a specimen like him. How much of his original self remained? Hard to say. However, I must admit, he put the sigh back in cybernetic. She Magazine, July 2111. 
This standard piece of software allows the user to interface with logs, receive email, and va retrieve various data formats, such as standard .map files. The PDA automatically organizes the logs and email by deck by interacting with groups of passive sensors. These cards are used to restrict entrance to the various critical areas of the ship. Used by dragging through a card slot reader, these cards appear deceptively low-tech. However, they are designed with a triple encrypted fractal data string. The cards mutate in sync with each other over 50,000 times a second, making them nearly impossible to counterfeit. Okay. That's... everything so far. A bottle of very strong vodka. Now we're talking. A distilled liquor, vodka is something that the replicators never really got quite right. The replicated brand is numbingly strong, but one's enjoyment is hindered by a sharp, biting taste. So, uh, alcohol will raise your health but lower your size, so I don't ever really use it. An audio log, Curtis, July 7th, 2114. I've been unable to get in touch with Delacroix. This place is falling apart. Members of my team keep disappearing. The leaks in the venting shaft shorted out the primary access channel, and that means we'll all be on auxiliary power until we can get it back up. That means all the lifts are out. Marie, where the hell are you? There's another security camera around the corner, so just be ready. Crew quarters! Access needed. We do not have access. Power drained. Oh, our brawn boost ran out of power. So it goes. Xerxes has control of the ship's security system. Avoid or destroy any security cameras you see. You can hack security computers to power down the cameras too, if you're good enough. But don't botch the job, or you'll set off the alarm yourself. Your corpse is useless to me. Alright, so we got two boxes. There's a turret on the other side of this pipe, so you really don't want to run down that ramp and mess with stuff. However, we can retrieve that box of armor-piercing bullets with side pole. We can get that one, too. And we can get that strength booster hypo. Well, in theory. Oh, what the hell? There we go, that was too many side points, but whatever. Armor-piercing bullets. The armor-piercing round is not particularly effective against soft targets, but it's the round of choice when up against mechanized foes. The uranium tips provide considerable penetrating power, even to relatively weak slug throwers like the Talon M2A3 and the M22 assault rifle. The bullet is the kid brother of the discarding Sabo rounds used by tanks in the 21st century. Besides the incredibly dense uranium tip, the casing is lined with an advanced ballistic material that decreases drag, imparting even greater penetration. And a strength booster. The strength, boost, the strength Boost Pharmaceutical confers one point of strength up to a maximum of, maximum of eight points for five minutes. Vitahib, the makers of Strength Boost, have been rumored to sell surgically implantable Strength Boost drip packages for athletes, though such things are, of course, highly illegal. And lastly, there's a box of standard bullets next to the turret that we can actually finagle we aim about here and crouch down. So we pulled it that far. Let's just grab it. Then back up before the turret starts fucking us up. Alright, let's head out this way now. Actually, I want to have a... Um, I want to have cryokinesis ready. Let's fuck up that camera. Now let's head this way. Info. Querying items. 
Most inventory items may be queried by first clicking on the question mark icon on the bottom left of the screen while in use mode, and then clicking on the object in question. This will bring up an MFD that gives detailed information on that object. You may also query objects while in use mode by holding down the control key and left clicking. Oh, really? Okay. Not with my rebinds, apparently. Each deck has a chemical storeroom where you can find the resources you need to research the artifacts you'll find around the ship. Don't try to carry around all the chemicals at once. It's impractical and unnecessary. Your research software will tell you what chemicals it needs, and when. Log, Chemical Manifest added to PDA. Chemical Manifest, MedSci, Laboratory Stockroom, Inventory MedSci, Stockroom 143. Antimony, SB2, Barium, BA1, Californium, CF2, Fermium, FM2, Gallium, GA1, Iridium, IR2, Osmium, OS1, Technetium, TC1, Tellurium, TE2, Yttrium, Y2. This inventory list is required by UNN Safety Code number 134882 to be kept on hand in all areas of hazardous chemical storage. Storage is defined by UNN Safety Code number 195331 to consist of all areas in which hazardous chemicals, see Safety Code number 093355, are stored in quantities greater than 50 grams per 10 square feet for durations of greater than 24 hours. So this guy's got another pistol. I'm just going to unload and leave. 12 standard bullets. Empty. Now, um, I happen to know the chemicals that we are going to need. Osmium. Research software and nanite-driven molecular processing has come to mean that the necessary material for performing basic research no longer includes complex organics and complex synthetics. Instead, chemical elements serve as raw materials for the nanite research processors and are combined as needed. Chemical containers such as this one are carefully designed to prevent the material from reacting with the environment, either chemically or energetically, and are fitted with dispensing nozzles that dock with most standard nanite injection ports. So we need an osmium, a fermium, and I don't have this memorized. I've got some cheat sheets over on my laptop, but antimony, SB, and gallium, GA. It's going to be a while before we raise our research skill, but once we do, these are all the chemicals that we're going to need and we'll be able to research just about everything we come across. Hybrid hype! Is there- ah! Oh! Ah! First time we took a hit. Six armor-piercing bullets, two med hypos. Let's use all the food we're carrying. Another info kiosk. Advanced ammo use. There are numerous types of ammo for most weapons. For example, the assault rifle can use standard armor-piercing and anti-personnel rounds. Each type of ammo is more effective against some types of enemies and less effective against others. For instance, firing anti-personnel rounds against an armored or metallic target is not going to cause much damage, but armor-piercing ammo can stop him in his tracks. Alright, here's the recharge station. This room's a little on the dangerous side. Let's side-pull that hypo. Now, when we drop down, two turrets are going to bum-rush us. So we need to sprint to the corner where the recharge station is. This is Xerxes. Remember, the unauthorized usage of firearms aboard the Von Krohn is a Class 3. <laughs> We can do some damage by taking out those explosive barrels, but what we really want to do is just line it up so we can shoot them without them being able to shoot us.
did Nyren leave? He might have. I think it's pretty late where he is. Med hypo and cyber modules. Now we can search the destroyed turrets. Can you generally find either nothing or some uh, standard bullets? Let's hit the recharge station. Now that we've recharged our power cell, we can go through into medical. A charged power cell. I don't think the flavor text is any different. No, it's not. Good work. I'm uploading some cybernetic modules. Find an upgrade unit as soon as you can and improve your rig. Right, let's go through to medical, my dudes. Now, beware! Whenever you enter a new sector, well, it's auto-saving. But, uh, until you find the quantum bio-reconstruction unit in the new area, death is death. So, be ready for that. Good, you've managed to get into med. Now find Grassy and get the keycard to the crew sector. He's the one who monitored your cryo sleep, so he might be interested in joining you. If he hasn't been butchered yet. So here are the crew quarters. Access needed. We do not have the access card yet. Access cards. Doors may require keycard access to open, in which case they will have a card slot by them. Any keycard that you pick up will contain a particular set of permissions distinct for that type of keycard. In order, in order to see what keycard accesses you have, look in your lower right info bar and click on the keycard icon. If you try to use a keycard slot and you have the relevant access, then you will automatically use the correct keycard. If you do not have the relevant access, you will see a message telling you what is required. Alright, there's a hybrid around this corner. Let's fuck him up. Is there Intruder. Intruder, the many demands to know your intentions. Are you allied with her? Do you not know of her intentions? Of her history? She once tried to destroy your species, and now you do her bidding. Intruder entering medical sector A. So pay attention to what he said, if he, I mean... 1999, spoilers are hardly relevant, but what he said was still pretty informative. Are you allied with her? Do you not know of her intentions, of her history? She once tried to destroy your species, and now you do her bidding. Major foreshadowing for the big reveal when we finally get to deck four. Let's roll through here. The monkeys scare the shit out of me in this game. Even now, there's just something so creepy about that little monkey chitter. We have a desk with version 1 research software. Research software provides even an untrained but cyber-equipped user with a suite of applications enabling basic investigation research to be done on devices and objects. Such research is best suited for field agents, as it grants only a rudimentary understanding of the subject. Further in-depth analysis must be done in a laboratory by more qualified investigators. Higher levels of the software employ the Curie Expert System to assist with the speed of research. Version 1 research software equipped, and an audio log, Watts, June 30th, 2114. Angela, while it may appear that the lab monkeys are communicating with each other, I assure you it's quite impossible. You claim that one monkey signed the passcode for a supply closet to another, and the latter proceeded to open it. As I'm sure you know, there have literally been tens of thousands of studies of primate intelligence. And there is no evidence of behavior even remotely that sophisticated. 
So either you've single-handedly trumped the entire field of animal behaviorists, or you're badly in need of a vacation. The surgical unit activation key. Something we're going to hold on to for, for now. The standard surgical unit is useful for diagnostic procedures under the control of a trained physician. This activation key, when attached to a surgical unit, will allow it to perform healing procedures automatically. A fierce battle with the medical lobbyist groups has resulted in a compromise in which the nanite-driven activation keys may not be installed by the vendor on a surgical unit, but may be stocked separately for customers to install in case of emergency, and the installation is not difficult. However, once the two are connected, a factory technician is required to disconnect the two. So there's an incomplete surgical unit here, but using the key on this is a waste. So. She showed in, pretty obvious, even though you never played any System Shock games. Well, yeah, of course, but... A badly damaged surgical unit. So you can't use an activation key on the badly damaged ones, only on the incomplete ones. Dead monkey's got nothing on it. But e even so, Alexander, have you seen the Shodan reveal when we finally get to Deck 4? Like, it kind of holds up even today. Like, it's a really, really well-executed scene. Ten nanites. And I think all the all the foreshadowing that they put in worked worked pretty well too. All right, let's drop down into this room. Nothing. Siamp. Two modules. Audio log from Curtis, July seventh, twenty one four twenty one fourteen. I can't raise anybody down in engineering. With the lifts out, I'll need to get down there through the emergency conduit in the Psi Annex. I think the access code is in Watts' lab. Desk with a Psi hypo. And you remember how I said using the, uh, using the key would be a waste? There's a complete surgical unit right here. With a surgical unit, you can spend five nanites to get yourself to full health. Not really worth it. Let's do a cryokinesis battle with the monkeys. Only two hits each. That's good to know. Two hits each does the trick. That is awesome. Alright, we're ready to use a Psy Hypo. We're down to four. That put us at 24. Good. Crates. We got a med hy two med hypos. Dead monkey got nothing. Information kiosk. Surgical units. Most surgical units on board are used for diagnostic purposes. However, if you attach a surgical unit activation key to one, it may be used to heal you of all damage. Be aware that these keys are not easy to locate. Alright, let's search the monkey corpses. Unresearched object. This item is not yet researched. Alright, so... There's a turret over there that I don't feel like fucking with. So let's just get behind this pipe. And then run through here. already read that. Here's a kiosk. Overloading Psy. When you use a psionic discipline, you can do one of three things. You can use it at normal power, you can overload and use it at a more powerful level, or you can burn out. Overloading will use the discipline as if you had a Psy stat too higher than you actually do, but takes more time to use than the normal level and risks burnout. If you want to use the discipline at normal level, you can just quickly left click. If you want to overload using more power, hold down the left button until the bar in the middle of the screen reaches the red box and turns red, and then release. Make sure that you don't hold down the left button until it hits the right edge. This will cause you to burn out, taking damage and having no effect. 
In here is our quantum bioreconstruction machine. We have a complete... Ah, Tiffany's home. That means it's about time to end the stream, my boys. Right, here's the here's another complete surgical unit. Let's see what's in the desk. 17 nanites. Hmm. That monkey was about to go to his son's graduation ceremony. All right, guys. I am going to end the stream right here with a hard save. Because not only is my wife home, but it's 1130 and it's actually a pretty reasonable bedtime. Especially considering we're heading to the cabin early tomorrow morning. So thank you all so very much. <laughs> For, uh, <laughs> I had a, <laughs> Alexander, I had, I, I, I thought at least I had Automod completely disabled, but, uh, I guess some of what you've said has, uh, has become a racial slur in its own right. Anyway, uh, we'll continue Iron Man System Shock 2, you know, whenever. <laughs> uh, next stream is going to be the regularly, regularly scheduled Fallout next Tuesday morning. So, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, special shout out to Testicle for becoming my very first subscriber. That's awesome, dude. Thanks so much. I promise I'll come up with I'll come up with some sub perks. I'll I'll meditate on that at the cabin this weekend and figure out what to do. Uh, anyway, everybody else have a fantastic weekend, and I hope to see most, if not all of you, on Tuesday morning. Bye-bye.